eight o'clock in the lab, standing at my workbench. What does it even mean? Testing. To try by doing. To compare results. There's always a result. Right? I don't know how I got started on this. You're telling me what's happened. Sleep patterns get disrupted on late night shifts. Things you've seen. Pictures in my head. You fell. Did you hit your head? It's my eyes. From squinting through the microscope. But when I look up, that wall where the shower should be, it's not there. Joe, what's happening? I'm okay. So long they can't get in. Who? I'm under attack. I'm coming in. No! The infection! Is it from the samples? Joe! Any news? Nothing yet. Mm. We have any idea what we're dealing with? Mm, we can't assume anything. Listen, when our sample comes up, just test for everything and we'll see how it goes. When I say what I do, people ask, Ooh, do you work with animals? I tell them I work in a hospital and they say, are you a nurse? Or aren't you a bit old to be a nurse? And I say, no, actually, I'm exactly the right age to lead a lab team. Healthcare scientists are 5% of the NHS and responsible for 80% of the diagnoses. Eyes glaze over. Perhaps we get overlooked because a lot of us are women and we don't play politics. Who needs politics when you've got science and bad jokes and cake, lots of cake. Management reckon we don't know how to communicate. They wanted our entire healthcare science team to engage with a questionnaire about soft skills. I said, oh yes, right, lovely, because it's not like we've got nothing else to do. I sent out an evidence-based report on soft skills with the survey to try and convince them to fill it in. I got six replies. Six. Not one of them filled the survey in. And all six critiqued the methodology of the paper. Some of us are patient-facing, like Joe. Joe shouldn't have been in last night. She tripped and fell the other day, exhausted from overwork, but a suspected case of measles in a six-year-old leukaemia patient, well, could have been a secondary infection possibly from a family visit. When children are immunosuppressed, measles could be lethal for the whole ward. Conditions change inside the body from minute to minute. We eliminated measles in our original sample. Ran the bloods for the other children, no sign of infection. When you're training, they say, if you hear hooves, don't immediately think of zebras. Horses or zebras, they're getting closer. I had a test tube in each hand. The lights are on a timer at night. I waved my arms and jumped around the lab in the dark. Nothing. Total blackout and completely silent. It wasn't a power cut. Our generator would have kicked in. It was inside. 
I was exposed. Who are you? Show yourself. processes you need to ensure that you've undertaken hand decontamination through hand washing and that you're wearing all the required personal protective equipment that is appropriate for the task you're about to undertake. Okay it's been a while since I've done this but under the circumstances it's all hands on deck. Based on our differential diagnosis we're really assuming measles right? Yeah with the likely exposure and initial conjunctivitis. That would be my starting point, yes. Samples on the plates. Okay, so that's our priority, yeah? Follow the drill. Don't rush. I mean, I, I know neither of you would, but just don't, okay? Oh my god! What is it? Jesus Christ! Oh, 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 what is it? What kind of monster has been at my bench? Someone moved the map sequence again. In the middle of the third row. What's wrong with people? You okay? All right then. Just put your results on Joe's desk. Same as always. been here for three months and I love coming to work every day. When I first started at the Francis Kelsey lab my mum got herself on Skype and insisted on fixing a call for my grandma's birthday to tell her about my new job. To be honest my mum's never understood what it is that I do. On the appointed day Nan just so happened to have invited all of her neighbours the over 60 Strictly class, the Polish engineer from down the road, who she's never even spoke to before, along with all of my cousins and my four nieces, for a birthday. I had no idea until the call comes through. And I, I look at my nan, and the, the friends, and the neighbours, and the cousins and the nieces, and I think, if I can't even explain what it is that I do to my mum, how can I tell so many different ages all at once? And I say, well, Nan, I'm a researcher in humans. And Grandma she bursts out clapping, everyone joins in. Later that night, Grandma rings me up, she doesn't understand my job. I tell her, it's two emotions. In the morning, I'm so fired up about the science that I often put my clothes on inside out. <laughs> but at night, when I'm leaving the hospital and I go past all the patients in the wards and, you know, who for different reasons don't get to go home. And I tell my grandma that my job makes me both humble and proud in equal parts. In the morning, the science fires me up. And at night, you think about the patients that you're leaving and it reminds you, we're all human, none of us immune. It's not routine what we do. We're not machines. Paul? Is that you? Kitty? If you can hear me, it's not what you think. It's not the samples. everywhere.
The infection is in our building, our communications, the ventilation system in the lab. If there's positive pressure after the power outage, it's pumping out airborne bacteria, airborne virus, not just the measles, our cat twos, threes, fully drug resistant TB. You have to get out now! If it's an infection, Joe would make the call about the antibiotic and go down the ward and tell him to take the patient's line out immediately. But this is more complicated. This is not measles. Are you sure? Not you. So what's our standard operating procedure now? We don't have an SLP for this. We have several. Given that it's not measles, wherever we decide to go next will determine our SOP. We just need someone to make that decision. Well, there must be some kind of protocol. This is the protocol. The conversation we're having right now is right, the okay. protocol. Well, it was useful then to eliminate measles. It would have been more useful to have confirmed measles. Can't we just test for something else? TB, mysteria, strep pneumo, brucella, we can test for anything. What would Joe do? Well, she would revise our differential diagnosis based on what we know. Factor in how long each test will take to schedule them in order of priority, uh, which to start when, if we're aiming to run tests for a number of options simultaneously. So, we know it's not measles, that was our first point of call. Look, everything we've put in so far for control is based on measles. Conjunctivitis mm. or inflammation of the eyes can be a starting symptom of many conditions, including measles. And it can, of course, simply just be conjunctivitis. With an escape of an airborne bacteria, we have smoke testy spray for evidence of the virus, but if it's not measles... If it's not measles but airborne, then are we looking at it being contracted from a person? Do we need to think about the ward? Needle stick injury? Taking a sample from a patient? Ocular shingles is a zoster complication of the eyes. It's not measles. Eyes. Leading to brain inflammation. Rapid onset and severe with delusion within others. Hmm. <laughs> Don't look at me! With my experience recently, I'm most likely to say, start with the cheapest first. I mean, I, I'm not saying that. Oh, I can't clear my head to think. Joe goes for a walk. I've seen a jogging around the hospital. <laughs> hmm. Paul? Paul? Where's he going? Every clinical floor knows how many minutes to escape. You move patients sequentially to the next ward. Horizontal evacuation. When the police put a security cordon around the hospital, no one can get in. When 7-7 happened, we kept working for 72 hours until we could be relieved. <sighs> Do they even know I'm here? <sighs> ah, be patient, Joe. I don't know how patients are supposed to sleep with all the infection everywhere and the fire alarms and all the shouting. <sighs> I 
think the problem might be these things are happening in here. I need a sample of my brain tissue. Trepanation. I need to get into my head. There must be something here. Some sort of sharp or a spike or malaria kits. You just grip. Grip the test. There's one black line or one line or two black lines. Uh-oh. Look at this blood. I feel oh, much lighter. Joe? Joe? Joe, can you hear me? Joe, wake up! <laughs> You know, if you're doing Cat 3 work and become exposed, you've got to strip down for decontamination. I worked out once what level of risk would persuade me to get naked in front of all my colleagues and walk through the lab to the decontamination shower, passing the glass door to the main atrium. 97% certain death. I worked in the Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone and I tested positive for Ebola when I came back. I never had Ebola so far as I know, but after I got back, my blood showed antibodies. I went out with a woman who was a clinical engineer and when she had to cancel our date on account of keeping a liver alive for an extended period before transplant, I to watch. Six engineers were involved to design and build a medical system to keep it functioning. I often think of that liver. Functioning in isolation in the basement on the nights. And every time I get a positive result, I uh, have a moment when I think I think 
I am the only person on earth who knows this woman's infection is resistant to antibiotics. And the first person in the world who knows this man's condition will be fatal. I know it's unscientific and I struggle against feeling this way, but I hope I wanted to tell you because I know that you'd understand and you can't hear me anybody. I feel a physical horror when I see a genetic family tree in sequence of black dots showing the genetic history and knowing that we will soon be sampling their next baby. That I know that child's future before anyone else, but that you, Joe, will have to go and tell. And I often thought, well, I can never do that. God close. I have to stay away. Here I am, Joe. Here we all are. We need to talk, obviously, about what this might be. Paul thinks it's a brain abscess. Oh. Brain abscess absolutely fits. Maybe due to progression from the initial conjunctivitis, maybe she got a hairline fracture when she fell and hit her head. Got auditory and visual hallucinations, her brain's burning up. We won't have results until tomorrow. Joe is the only one of us who's qualified to make that diagnosis tonight. But if it is, and resistant, shouldn't we change her treatment now? And it could be something else entirely. Joe's having a breakdown. Her mental health. Compromised by stress uh, and seven day weeks for months on end. She's lost the ability to make a risk assessment about herself, to take proper breaks and to, to eat or sleep accumulated hours of exposure, and she's having a psychotic episode. It's what I've been warning management about could happen. No, not to Joe. She's resilient. Yeah, well, not now she's not. She's in a catatonic state on the ward. A psychotic episode could do that. You could start antimicrobials tonight, but if she's having a breakdown, that won't help. And if they start treating her for a psychotic breakdown, won't that be worse? Run the gram stain, and we'll see for ourselves. Please touch on the slides at the top of the reagent bottle and be gentle with application. The next thing we're going to do is flood the slide with Graham's iodine for one minute. Avoid touching the slide with the top of the reagent bottle and be gentle with application throughout in order to reduce the risk of dislodging any cells. Once you've applied the Graham's iodine, time this using a clock or a stopwatch. Rinse with water and shake off any excess fluid. I'm lying in blackness, bottom of a hole, black stain in my head, rowing. I heard my name. I am their hug of joy, their fury, the dreadful pain and silence. I don't always remember friends' birthdays, but can't forget all the dates when here. Do you know 
conjunctivitis can be a symptom of severe infection. You know, on balance of probability, it's just conjunctivitis. You rationalize. You're fine. God, stop. Stop. Rest. You've got your test results. Brain abscess with a hairline fracture. It's gram positive. We've started treatment. Mm. She's going to be fine. Mm. Eight o'clock, in the lab, standing at my workbench. There has to be a result, even no change. Doing X to Z. Under. Specific. Controlled. I don't know how I got started on this. You're telling us what happened. Nights when I can't sleep, things you've seen. The ones you've lost. We're not just loading samples. We're not machines. Mm -hmm.